In the annals of history, there are figures whose contributions have shaped the course of our world. But what if I told you that behind the name of J. Robert Oppenheimer lies a tapestry of secrets and little-known facts that could change the way you view this enigmatic figure? Today, we're going to unveil 15 intriguing things you didn't know about Robert Oppenheimer. Get ready to journey through the life of one of the most influential scientists in modern history. Number 15, Julius Robert Oppenheimer. Born in 1904 in New York City to Jewish parents who had immigrated from Germany, Robert Oppenheimer's first name is actually Julius. Oppenheimer, however, preferred to go by his middle name, Robert. His father was a wealthy textile executive which allowed Robert and his brother, Frank, to receive the best education. After graduating high school, Oppenheimer attended Harvard where he earned a degree in chemistry in just three years. Number 14, Oppenheimer the Genius. Robert Oppenheimer's parents knew that their son was something special at an early age. Oppenheimer completed the third and fourth grade in only one year. At age 12, he took an interest in geology and gave a lecture at a geology club in New York. After graduating Harvard in three years, he attended Cambridge University where he began his study of physics. Number 13, Oppenheimer's Dark Side Like many, Oppenheimer had a dark side. He was a chain smoker who often engaged in self-destructive behavior and he suffered from depression. His relationship with world-renowned chemist, Linus Pauling ended when Oppenheimer tried to solicit his wife to run away with him for a romantic tryst. Number 12, Ties to the Communist Party In 1939, Oppenheimer met and began dating Catherine Puning, a radical from Berkeley and former Communist Party member. Oppenheimer supported many left-wing causes that aligned with the Communist Party ideology. In 1942, when Oppenheimer joined the Manhattan Project, he wrote in the security questionnaire that he had been a member of just about every communist front organization on the West Coast. Many years later he claimed that he didn't remember saying that in either way, it was not true. Number 11, The Mystic Robert Oppenheimer had many interests throughout his life. After leaving Harvard, he started reading classical Hindu texts. He learned Sanskrit and later read many literary works written in it, and was said to deeply ponder their meanings. Number 10, The Polyglot Did you know that Robert Oppenheimer was a polyglot? Not only was he a brilliant physicist, but he was also fluent in several languages, including Sanskrit, German, French, and even Greek. His linguistic prowess enabled him to draw insights from various cultures, enriching his understanding of the world. Number 9, Oppenheimer had an artistic soul. Despite his scientific acumen, he had a profound appreciation for poetry, especially works by poets like John Donne and T.S. Eliot. This unlikely intersection of science and art shaped his unique perspective on life and the universe. Number 8, Oppenheimer almost became an attorney. Robert Oppenheimer was a brilliant man and could have chosen any career he wanted. Before venturing into the world of physics, he seriously considered becoming a lawyer. However, his insatiable curiosity for the natural world led him down a different path, a path that would eventually lead to the development of the atomic bomb. Number 7, More Than Just a Scientist Oppenheimer's role in the Manhattan Project was not only scientific but also administrative. Often hailed as the father of the atomic bomb, he not only contributed to the theoretical aspects of the project but also demonstrated remarkable leadership in coordinating the efforts of various scientists. Number 6, Outspoken Advocate Despite his integral role in the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer later became an outspoken advocate for arms control and disarmament. He deeply regretted the destructive potential of nuclear weapons and campaigned for their controlled use. In 1946, he co-authored the Acheson Lilienthal Report which was one of the first attempts to come up with a system to assert international control over the use of atomic energy. Number 5, Clearance Revoked In 1954, Robert Oppenheimer's security clearance was revoked due to his left-leaning political views and associations. While he did support many left-wing causes and dated a former Communist Party members, Oppenheimer denied he himself was a communist. This dark chapter in history tainted his reputation and took a toll on his personal life. Number 4, Destroyer of Worlds The famous quote, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, attributed to Oppenheimer after witnessing the successful Trinity nuclear test, was, in fact, a paraphrase from the ancient Indian text, the Bhagavad Gita. His profound awareness of the gravity of the moment led him to borrow these words to capture the magnitude of the event. Number 3, Oppenheimer's Contributions 
Oppenheimer's contributions extended beyond the atomic bomb. He played a significant role in the emergence of quantum mechanics and astrophysics. His broad-ranging interests made him a formidable force in multiple scientific domains. The late physicist Hans Bethe wrote of Oppenheimer's lectures, he brought to them a degree of sophistication in physics previously unknown in the United States. Here was a man who obviously understood all the deep secrets of quantum mechanics and yet made it clear that the most important questions were unanswered. His earnestness and deep involvement gave his research students the same sense of challenge. He never gave his students the easy and superficial answers but trained them to appreciate and work on the deep problems. Number 2. Inspiring the Next Generation In 1947, Oppenheimer was appointed as the director of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, where he continued his research and inspired the next generation of scientists. He became renowned not just for his scientific achievements, but also for his mentoring abilities. Number 1. Friendship Among Titans Robert Oppenheimer and Albert Einstein knew each other for decades, but it wasn't until the last ten years of Einstein's life that they became close colleagues and friends. Both were great admirers of each other's work and accomplishments. Oppenheimer said that Einstein, because of his despair over weapons of war said that if he had it to do all over again, he would be a plumber. Oppenheimer called that statement a balance of seriousness and jest. And there you have it, 15 things you probably didn't know about Robert Oppenheimer. If you found these facts as fascinating as we did, be sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button to join us on more exciting journeys through history. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future explorations. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of Revealing History.